Star Wars 7x7 episode 2927. It's a What to Watch Now Saturday episode, and we haven't checked in on the Industrial Light and Magic YouTube channel, but I guess now is a perfect time to do it because they just dropped the trailer for Light and Magic, the new documentary series from Disney Plus coming soon, and we'll talk about the highlights in that trailer on today's episode. Punch it! <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, let's get the <laughs> elephant in the room, or at least this was the elephant in the room for me out of the way. We knew that the series was debuting in July, July 27th to be precise, but the question of scheduling was very prominent in my head, considering that we know Andor is coming on August 30th, and so it was like, okay, how's that going to work? Well, there were a couple of ways for it to go. They could have dropped the first two episodes on July 27th and run the next four in August and been clear of the Andor series, but it turns out they're not doing it that way. They're actually going to drop all six episodes of this documentary series on July 27th. That, of course, is a bit of a surprise, but I think that's actually what they did with the Get Back documentary, come to think of it, and it's not what they did with the Disney Gallery series on season one of The Mandalorian. They were releasing all the episodes of those serially, like week by week, so yeah, uh, you know, I guess they're experimenting with the format, basically. But I guess Get Back being the most recent big documentary thing that they released. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was Andor. I don't know. I'm just curious about these things. So anyway, yes, all six episodes are going to drop on July 27th. Another thing we learned from the trailer is what the thematic focus of the series is going to be. It starts off with George Lucas in the beginning being interviewed, and it's a contemporary interview, it looks like. He's white-bearded and white-haired, so yeah, from current times. And he says, movies are special effects. It's not just about the special effects within the movies. He's talking about the movies themselves. And then there's a thing later on where they say the only thing more special than the effects are the people that make them. And you get a strong sense that that's going to be the focus of this this documentary series. It really is going to be very much about the people who created ILM, who built ILM, who made Star Wars what it is, and also we're going to focus on other movies as well. But another thing I wanted to highlight from the trailer is that they do seem to be focusing very specifically on Disney Plus properties, and I suppose that's probably to be expected. It's probably easier to get from a rights perspective also. I think the only footage that I saw that was from a non-Disney owned property is from Terminator. Terminator 2, they showed some of the, you know, liquid metal stuff with Robert Patrick, right? But, you know, even like, say, the E.T. stuff that showed up in there, it wasn't actually footage from E.T. It was stuff from ILM and them setting up the bicycle flying scene, for example. Turning back to the people situation, though, in addition to archival and contemporary interviews with people involved in ILM, we're also getting filmmakers as well. So George Lucas in interviews from back in the day, as well as currently Steven Spielberg back in the day on the set of Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, since that's what it's called now. There, Ron Howard on the set of Willow back in the 80s, and Jim Cameron is also in archival footage as well as in current interviews. That, I also suppose, probably has something to do with the Avatar movies, since now they are over with Disney. And, yeah, I didn't see anything that suggested that they're going to cover Avatar stuff in there, but it seems like they'd be foolish not to touch on that stuff. They did show a brief thing from The Abyss, which had to do with, you know, the way that they animated the water going around in that um, uh, in the Deepwater Ocean rig, right? That movie was very hard to get a hold of for a long time. It was finally made available again, and I don't know whether it's on Disney Plus now, but that was a 20th Century Fox movie, so in theory, that should be over with Disney Plus as well. But it's really more about the Industrial Light and Magic folks specifically than it is about the filmmakers, and there's a thing where it's, you know, after 47 years and 16 Oscars and more than 350 films, Films, their story will finally be told and some of that archival footage from the 70s just looks so fun with all the people but also even the attempts to film trench run sequences and seeing <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi on the Death Star like a mannequin get sliced in half and a TIE fighter getting snapped apart and you know water slides with the people just goofing around and stuff like that it does look so much fun 
Although about that whole 350 movies and 16 Oscars over 47 years thing, doesn't that seem like not very much? Like Lucas at one point says that when he was writing Star Wars, there was no special effects house anywhere in the world. So ILM was a big deal. And, you know, they've been in operation for nearly half a century. I'm just, I'm stunned at the notion that they've only won 16 Oscars. And, you know, I went and looked it up. They also have 40 additional nominations and they've won 24 science and technology, extra special like side Oscars from the Academy. So I guess it's not like they haven't been nominated, but I mean, I guess 56 Oscar nominations in the competitive categories and 16 wins. How are they not winning <laughs> that all the time? Unless, you know, in some cases they might've been competing against themselves for all we know. It just that seemed outrageous to me that it's only 16 that they've won and not that the Wikipedia page should necessarily be treated as gospel exactly, but yeah, that had the same thing. And that was what they put in the trailer. So yeah. Yeah, shocking as it may be. And they aren't necessarily showing just old timey stuff. There is some footage from The Mandalorian, like there's a scene with Deborah Chow talking with some folks while Baby Yoda is on the med bed. So if you remember in chapter three of The Mandalorian, when Mando decided, nope, I'm gonna go after the baby, and he got in there and Dr. Pershing was like, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, right? Like from that scene, there's stuff in there too. And so one wonders if we're gonna see anything from Andor or Ahsoka, probably not, because it's also a matter of when did they actually film this stuff for light and magic so I don't know if we're necessarily gonna see maybe you know I would love to see Andor stuff wouldn't that be fun and wouldn't it be you know cool if they added that in you know post somehow and just said oh yeah we'll do some fun narration stuff and we'll give you a little you know wink at Andor or something like that I don't know if they're gonna be able to pull that off but yeah, I, I think it would be really cool if they did. So yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. They probably will have something from Avatar 2 in there, I bet if that's your thing. Anyway, so there you go. I'm going to link to the Light and Magic trailer at the blog post for this show's episode at SW7X7.com, and it'll be in the show notes as well. But that is what to watch for this week, and it's definitely worth watching. I'm excited about this, and we'll have something to enjoy and keep us tidied over until Andor hits on August 30th. But for now, that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.